Hi guys, so this video is in response to a lot of the comments I've been seeing about this Yahoo Options Tracker not working anymore. And we can clearly see that with this Tesla put that it's returning NA, saying that the, the web page is empty. That initially made me think that the Yahoo Options uh, page was being loaded with the JavaScript, uh, similar to what we saw with the NASDAQ dividend data where they updated their website. And the XML function, at least in Google Sheets, uh, can't access any tags when it's created by JavaScript. Um, but when I tried other contracts, I was able to get back some information. But as uh, Nick Sparrow here was saying that it returns back zero or just some other data. And yeah, for two different contracts, they're returning back. It returns back uh, the bid and ask as zero and then NA for the open interest. But if you go to the contract itself, uh, you can see that there is open interest and uh, different bid and asks from zero. So that makes me think that Yahoo is doing some other kind of processing on the data and that this XML, import XML function isn't going to work anymore in Google Sheets. So the method I have for it is to use uh, R code to do the import uh, function. And that's what's here. I have the R code shared with you guys. So you can just click on that and copy it if you have RStudio running or on your machine, you can download it. It's free. Uh, and I'll just step through the code with you guys so you can see what's going on. Let me just clear out some of this stuff from before. So this is the R uh, studio and the code that I have in that file for you. Uh, and I'll just describe what it's doing here. I have comments throughout the code with the double hash. Uh, and this piece right here is code that you uh, can uncomment out if you need to run it. Uh, this is just to install the packages if you don't have them installed already. So what it does, it takes these two libraries to pretty much do that import XML function. This first variable is this contract list and what it is it's essentially this portion uh, of the original tracker just as a variable so you'll list all the contracts that you want to uh, get information for here and then these two variables are just to create and aggregate the data um, later on when we run the loop and here's a loop so this takes those contracts in that contract list and one by one it just creates the same sort of structure that we were doing in the Google Sheets. So uh, that first piece is going to create this dynamic URL with the contract names. And that's what this is. This Y URL variable is just creating that string uh, with the contract names inputted in the string. And then this variable right here is using the that string we just created and this curl function to make the request uh, or to manage the request for us. And then the read HTML function is just pulling all the information from that page. So all the HTML from that page and then saving it uh, in this page variable. And that's essentially what this import XML function was doing. It was making a request to the page and then taking everything from there. What we do after that is again, similar what to the HTML function or what the XML function is doing by targeting the table rows and table data. Uh, that's what this piece was doing in the X path and we're able to do it here as well. So once we get all that, that's all the table data information. I did notice some of the comments people were asking for the close price, which isn't in the uh, table, it's actually above the table. So that's what this piece is for. It, it targets that specific X path and gets that piece of information. And then after it gets those two pieces of information, the stuff in the table here, and then this piece right here, uh, it then joins all that together in, in this uh, un y underscore data variable and then adds it to that data points list that I mentioned earlier. And that's just for one contract. After it's finished with one contract, it iterates again and then goes to the next contract. So once that's done and it's gone through all the contracts and then just starts to create the data frame, uh, which is very similar to a spreadsheet. And then after it does that, it uh, I define some headers here that I know are going to be numbers. So these are all the numbers in that data and I format them as numbers. Uh, and then for where the, where your, the header is open interest, uh, we have to just remove the K and then format that specifically to thousands. So in that instance, you can see here where there is a K, it just takes it and formats it to the appropriate number or otherwise it just turns it into a regular number. And after it does that, uh, it then saves this file uh, to your local drive as this specific name. 
Uh, you could change this to whatever you want it to be, but if you already have a file with this name, that's a CSV file, uh, it's going to overwrite it. So just make sure that you change that if you need to. Um, you could also uh, have it put to a specific folder with a specific name with this code here. Uh, I'll leave a link uh, in the description for this piece as well, and I think it's very helpful. Uh, if you wanted to make it dynamic, say if you want to save it to a different location, uh, maybe like a Dropbox that you have linked, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, but essentially that's what it does. It outputs that CSV file. So let me just run it so you can see. Okay, so it just ran and the output again is this CSV file which is based off of this data table. So if I go up here into this object explorer and click on data table, I can see what the output would will be. And already we can see that it's working, so we're getting information for Tesla, uh, for that Tesla put, whereas the original one was giving back NA. So this seems to this shows that there's limitations to the import XML function, uh, and we could also see that we're getting bid and ask information as well as open interest information, which this wasn't giving us uh, the correct bid and ask in the open interest, and we could also see uh, that this portion here for this specific contract where it was. Uh, giving back in a different format, this 1.6 representation there, uh, it's being formatted appropriately. So that is it, where you can get now a CSV file instead of doing the request uh, by itself. So if you wanted to work with this in, in Excel, uh, you could totally now just do it and just stop there. You don't have to throw this in Google Sheets anymore. But if you wanted to, uh, I will show you an option, but I just want to make sure that say some things about it because it is limited based on how Google updates these requests for data. So if you go to this tab that I have here, this R code, and next to that you can still, still see here if you still want it in Google Sheets, what we need to do is one, have a Google Drive. So if you have Google Drive, that's where you want to upload the CSV file was out, that was outputted by this code. So I'm going to upload the file that we just outputted from that R code. Let's go to new, upload file. And this, this is the file that we just uh, produced. Okay, so after it's loaded, you wanna right click on it and go to get link. And you wanna change it from restricted to anyone with link. And copy that, click done, make sure to click done. And then go back to the folder. And here you're gonna input that uh, Google link that we just copied, but you wanna remove everything uh, before this D and after the view. So that gives you the document ID. So this is the document ID. And what this does, it just creates a downloadable link for that, for that document ID. So now, once we have that downloadable link, we can use this function called import data that Google has and just reference the cell that has the link. In this case, it was G3 and click enter and it seems to work. So pretty much we're creating a link to that file that's in our uh, Google Drive. And this is a way we can still work with it in Google Drive if we wanted to. Uh, there are some limitations here though with this file or with this function uh, that are outlined here. All these functions, import data, import feed, import XML, take an hour to refresh. So if you just made a change, say you just uploaded that file and you wanted to add several more uh, and you ran the code, re-uploaded this file, it might take an hour for this to reload even if you uh, take out this and you know refresh it, uh, you won't. You might get an error saying that it can't fetch the file, or that you'll just still see the same old data, and you won't see like your updated data. So, for example, let me just add uh, a couple contracts to the one we just ran. So here, let's add a couple more. And one for Baba. Remember to put the comma if you're adding and the close it in quotes. I'm just going to get rid of these variables here that were just created. 
and run it again. So again, this saves over the file I just created. And you can see that the data table has the two that we just added. Now if I go back to my Google Drive and I click New, Upload File, and then upload the same file, it's just going to overwrite. Yep. Got it. And if I go back here, you would think it would load, but it's not. Uh, if I, if you think that clicking refresh is going to make it load, we'll see. Okay, you can still see that it, it's the old information. Looks like it's loading something. Uh, one way I thought you can get around it was by breaking the link and then adding it back again. And okay, that seems to work this time around, uh, but I haven't encountered instances where that doesn't work. So if you still want to do it in Google Sheets, it seems like you can use the import data function and do that method of just taking out the equal signs and breaking the link and just have it reload again. Uh, since your, you know, since the ID doesn't seem to change uh, when you upload multiple versions of this. Um, but I have experienced instances where this doesn't give back the information and it's probably due to uh, the limitations of it being t uh, having an hour to load. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be working with it in Google Sheets with this method. Uh, otherwise, uh, like I was saying before, once you run this code, uh, since it's outputting it as a CSV file, you can work directly with it in uh, Excel if you wanted to. So that's it. Uh, I know it's not the best solution, and it, I know it's not um, what is easiest to manage in something like this, uh, but it's a solution uh, that I hope helps with you guys. Uh, thanks for watching and thanks for all your support and for subscribing. It's really helpful and uh, thanks for all the comments guys. Talk to you later.